Yo, yo, YouTube. In this video, we're going to inspect the speed drift mechanic, visualize its effects, and see what an AI can achieve in full speed. In Trackmania, a speed drift is a physics exploit that allows players to accelerate faster than the straight line acceleration value for their car. This is achieved simply by drifting the car at an angle. This angle depends on quite a few things, but most important is speed and the surface type. Controlling speed drifts is an incredibly precise and skillful mechanic, and is perhaps one of the most beloved and popular aspects to the game. We'll talk about some detailed speed drift tips for players, and then also see what a self-trained auto speed drift AI can do. One of the hardest things about speed drifts is that they are a hidden mechanic. This means that apart from the speed going up a bit faster, there's no real way to see any feedback. There's pretty much one resource when it comes to SD, as known in the community. I initially built a basic SD plugin to visualise not only the power of the SD, see the acceleration bar, but also the ideal angle. We'll revisit what the ideal angle is in a bit. Later I improve this to work on all surfaces and for all slopes. We'll go through the mass and AI analysis use of the plugin at the end of the video. Let's review the skid overlap image in the context of some data. We'll also include some steering inputs from the AI here. Overall, for this flat surface example on the road, there is pretty strong agreement, and so I'll be linking the video that goes over this in the description. The only thing I have to add is that the critical values for speed drifting on road are 424 and 418. These are the minimum speeds required to either start a worthwhile SD or to land in a worthwhile SD. On curved surfaces, SDs are also possible. However, running up the surface is slightly more effective than running down it. And on each surface, there is a critical angle on the incline. Past this angle, it won't be possible to speed slide anymore. This angle is different for each surface. For all non-road surfaces, the speed slide angle for all speeds is very, very small. In fact, it is so small that usually the best results are had by either tapping or by holding an extremely precise and narrow SD. The main difference being that on other surfaces, you do not need to brake tap to initiate a speed slide. This makes speed slides on these other surfaces much more powerful but also much more difficult to set up since in a speed slide on these other surfaces you will not be turning very far. Although on these surfaces a speed slide is a viable above 200, because of gear 4 timing at around 240 speed and because of how the car turns slightly faster in a no slide, on dirt and grass it is usually better to no slide until gear 4 and then to speed slide after. Right, so let's have a look at some AI footage and see what the AI can do. The AI has been trained on around 180 hours of in-game replays and from its own self-learned testing. As comparisons, I've put up my own attempt at speed sliding as well as um, the acceleration with no speed slide. Now, I'm not a full speed player, but this difference in acceleration is absolutely massive. What's really strong about the AI is that it's perfectly reproducible, so it will always produce SDs this strong. Let's have a look at the AI on an actual map. I bound the AI to the back two triggers of my controller to be easily initiated or deactivated when needed. However, I still need to drive the rest of the map, so this is by far the weakest part of this setup. I also have to be very careful not to complete any official records, since this is definitely cheating. The AI struggles slightly with this uphill uh, since it has no vision of the map. It just has to react to what the live telemetry of the game is saying. The AI also runs into problems of overjumping the ending here. Unfortunately, as interesting as it might be, I can't go into details about the implementation of how the AI or the interface works with the game since this could easily lead to cheating. Those of you paying close attention might have noticed how the plugin size and shape changes uh, with the speed of the car and this is merely a reflection of how strong and how precise the SD needs to be at that speed. You might have also noticed the plug-in shape is slightly asymmetrical particularly at higher speeds and this is a reflection of how in Trackmania it's slightly better to overslide than to underslide and how overslides are more forgiving. So this is a real community full speed map and I'm doing a great job of demonstrating that even with near perfect SDs um, there's still a lot of other skill on full speed maps, which I lack. This also demonstrates a problem with the AI, which is that when I surrender steering control, I can no longer easily understand or predict exactly how tight the AI is going to turn. Uh, this makes it easy to either run out wide and hit something, or to turn too sharply and end up hitting something. The AI is capable of doing frame perfect brake taps to initiate the speed slide, even if it's going straight. So this map is uh, Chroma's Hell uh, by Evo Chroma. It's a bit infamous for being known 
as a full speed trial map. In other words, uh, you really need to be pretty good at speed drifts to be able to complete this. He was featured in a virtual video where he documented how long it took him to even learn how to complete this map in a single run. As you can see, the AI is so strong at speed drifting that it's compensating for how bad I am at the turnovers and the wall rides. Despite this, I think it's pretty incredible how much easier it is to complete this with the AI than without. And really, this run was proof to me that the AI is definitely cheating and the AI's ability to produce speed slides which it grades as above 85 is superhuman. Uh, even the best full speed players in the world struggle to get um, speed slides that the AI would rate above 90. In fact, this is incredibly rare. In many ways, this is the best demonstration of the AI's aptitude at speed slides. The next map is a bit special because I think this might be my favourite full speed map in the game that I've played at least. And it's certainly a great place to learn to speed drift. This would be purple by entry lag. In many ways, this isn't a very good map for the AI since a lot of the speed drifts are on uneven and changing surfaces which the AI has to respond to in a delayed manner. Um, however, the AI is still able to execute some unbelievably powerful speed drifts and in many ways it's quite disappointing for me that I was so easily able to destroy my personal best here on the first attempt. So I was trying to think of some conclusions that strong full speed players or strong players in general might be able to take away from the AI's play but this seems a bit difficult. Essentially I suppose it underlines the skill cap in speed drifts and how difficult it is and indeed how incredibly precise it is to execute a worthwhile speed drift below 500 speed. That's probably what I was most personally surprised at. I do hope I haven't offended any full speed players with my very lacklustre attempts at playing some of these maps, but in many ways I wonder if that sort of, if that makes my point about how strong the AI is even more clear. If any full speed players have some feedback or some thoughts about how the AI plays or how the plugin operates, I'd be very interested to uh, hear what you have to say. As discussed earlier in the video, these tools are unlikely to become public. The plugin tool might become public if other plugin tools become public that help SDs. I do not want to start any kind of cheating pandemic in the game or as some people put it, uh, ruin full speed. This was never my intention. So as promised, let's briefly go over um, how the maths and physics work in this game and why the speed drift exists. So from a physics point of view, um, there are three basic states that the car can exist in. When it's in full grip, in partial grip, which is where one rear wheel loses grip and the other one keeps grip, the community called this a no slide and state three, which is a full slide where all of the wheels have lost grip. In state one, only three forces apply to the car. The engine is pushing forward. The front wheels can provide a turning force if needed and gravity applies. State three also adds a drift force onto the entire car. This is only applied to the rear wheels and is applied in the exact opposite direction to the front wheel positional vector. The forward power of this force is also given by the car's alignment. When the wheels turn, the drift force of the wheel of the car is being applied forwards, giving acceleration forward. There's a trade-off though, as the more you turn, the more the engine will lose forwards force, but the more the rear drift will gain force. The less you turn, the less rear drift force, but the more the engine force will be, will be applied directly forward to the front wheels. Also, the more you turn, the more the car rotates. The ideal setup involves having this tense's first differential be zero. At this point, we are instantaneously tracing a perfect circle with a centripetal force equal to the car's rotational inertia. The problem is that this rotational force depends on the speed, and so the radius of the circle and therefore the angle of the drift is constantly changing with speed. The first speed boundary condition on this tensor is 424.6, which is also the minimum speed required to start a speed slide as mentioned earlier. If you can ignore the boundary condition on this tensor, then the speed required drops to 417.8. Some experienced Trackmania players might just notice how these points also describe the nose boost and bug side exploits. Because the back wheels have no friction in the nose block, you're basically able to drive with the full force of the friction applied at contact. The bug slide is similar, but you keep the back wheel sliding and then the direction of motion is forwards. This is also how ice slides work. So from a mass perspective, in terms of finding the ideal angle and steering rate for the car at any particular given situation, we need to consider a basic diagram and make the assumption that each of these angles, as a small increment of time elapses, is either going to be small, in which case, using the Taylor expansion for cosine and sine, we can approximate these to some to some linear equation, which can easily be solved. All of the other angles need to be eaten out um, by some approximation of one of the symmetries of the system. In the real world, we call this Nova's theorem, uh, but in Trackmania, we make some basic assumptions about uh, the symmetry of time. So for example, it doesn't matter if you press forward at one second or five seconds, the same force is being applied to the car. 
these seem like reasonable assumptions to make. And so uh, these factors can completely come out of our equation. This whole setup either reduces us to independent variables, which we can extract out and push into the formula, or dependent variables, which are linear approximations from sine and cosine, as mentioned before. For the work with the AI, I found it appropriate to approximate this to a cubic. This lowered my variance to below six sigma, which seemed appropriate.